So as we get ready for today's event, I wanted to pose three questions for self-reflection for the group. First, how have your experiences to date helped to shape your development? And second, how does networking fit within your personal and development plans? And lastly, how have your relationships and your connections helped direct you to where you are today and where you want to be in the future? Uh, tonight, we are delighted to have with us a woman who has built a successful career by building and cultivating meaningful relationships. She will show us that networking is more than just having a mile-high contact list or a pile of business cards. Through her experiences, we will learn that it takes both time and careful cultivation to build meaningful relationships that help to move our careers forward. In preparing for the introduction tonight, I did reach out within my network because I realized that I have a shared connection with Natasha. And I, when I reached out to my colleague, uh, he shared with me that Natasha is somebody who makes change happen through the relationships, in, intellect, detailed planning, and excellence in edu execution. So it's with great pleasure tonight that I introduce to you our, our keynote speaker, Natasha Kaufman, president and founder of NKPR. I have, so I have a few more words to say about Natasha. There's a, f okay, I that. <laughs> no, that, no, but please stay there. So just to go over a little bit about Natasha's uh, impressive resume. Natasha is an expert at creating and maintaining relationships that span industries, uh, professions, and international borders. She believes passionately in the importance of building and nurturing those connections. And it's that passion that has led her to many successes and becoming one of the most sought after PR experts. Uh, Natasha also provides public relations and strategic counsel to cause related initiatives such as Artists for Peace and Justice, which is a nonprofit organization that supports communities in Haiti through programs and education. Her company, NKPR, is a full service public relations agency with offices in Toronto and New York. It is celebrating its 11th year in business and has a proven record of international success, including brands such as Jones New York, Kiehl's, L'Oreal, Sky Vodka. Ford Models, SE, and Stilla Cosmetics. So now we can provide applause again, and please welcome me to join Natasha to the stage. I have to tweet. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Boy, you guys are so beautiful. Okay. All right. So I practice, by the way, in front of my dog. So... <laughs> Not naked, but in front of my dog. <laughs> um, welcome. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Um, I'm thrilled to be here and uh, thrilled to a sold out crowd. You never know what's going to happen. I, and I think I emailed you and I'm like, does anyone care? So happy that you do care. Um, when I was first asked to speak about networking, I thought, what an interesting topic it is for me. I built my career on networking, and I suppose, although it never felt like that until I was asked to speak about it with you tonight, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, for me, it's always, it's so inherent to who I am and what I do, um, but it's a thing. Like, I think networking is really difficult for a lot of people, and I just want to make sure that um, what I take you through tonight is actually meaningful and valuable to you. I know for me that I've tried to live my truth and really treat people the way I want to be treated. And perhaps in doing so, I've been fortunate enough to foster and build an incredible network of support. When I started NKPR 11 years ago, it was much easier than it is today to engage and interact. I'm a big believer in actually connecting and fostering relationships the old fashioned way. And in many ways, having tools like LinkedIn can be confusing to that process. And I know that it was a really useful tool for you to sort of find that connection, but when I started my career, there was no LinkedIn, and you just had to do it the old-fashioned way, where you picked up the phone and you really connected with people when you saw them. And I think it's actually harder for a lot of you today than it was for me when I started out. I try to really break down what are the most important aspects of networking that I can share with you that will be meaningful and of value. I broke it down into five key points. 
and throughout the next 20 minutes I will take you through what I feel are the most important aspects of networking today and what have been my key learnings over the last, I guess, 11 years. The first one and most important, and Carolyn, you mentioned this, is authenticity. For me, a network is simply a group of people I like and admire and with whom I have an authentic connection. It's not all about LinkedIn or anything technical. In fact, for me, it's actually very emotional. Mutual respect and admiration, you'll hear that a lot throughout this speech, is the key to determining who should be part of my network. If I don't have that mutual respect and admiration for you, I just don't know if, that, if it makes sense. And I think that a network should be built on shared values. Having an authentic network has always been important to me, not just in my career, but in my personal life too. Since my son Justin was born, it's been important that the relationships he saw me cultivating were real and sincere, and that I would be someone that he could respect and admire. Not many of you know this, and some do, I suppose. I was 18 when I had him. And I certainly did not know back then the career that I would have. I mean, at 18, I didn't really know much. <laughs> uh, but what I did know is that I wanted to be someone that he could be proud of. And with that in mind, you know, you need to really pick and choose the people you surround yourself with because they're a huge reflection of who you are. When I started my career in PR, one of the things I used to do was take the time to send a note to a writer when I loved something that I read. It wasn't about pitching them or asking them about anything in return. I didn't know at the time, but that was the start of my network of writers and media contacts. It was really authentic. It was based on reading an article, I loved it, and I just wanted them to know that I appreciated the fact that they wrote it. One of the first writers I did this with was Deirdre Kelly from the Globe and Mail. Sorry, National Post, I love you both. <laughs> um, and to this day, she's one of my closest and dearest friends. I asked her what her thoughts were about our early days and our interaction, and she said this. People often are just pitching me a story, but with you, I never felt that way. It was actually more about me than it was ever about you, and I love you for it. Your support and friendship is something sincere and sustained. You forge the kinds of relationships that make people feel that they are part of your family. Reading that really made me think. It's so true. When fostering an authentic network, it has to be about the other person more than it is about you. So how do you find those valued partners, collaborators, and in my case, family members? For me, it's shared values that make for strong partners. Me reaching out to writers just because I was genuinely interested in what they were writing about, that initial relationship was already built on shared values. When you meet somebody in a professional context, don't just zero in on who they are and what they do. Networks and contacts are there for the long term. Where a person is today may not be where they are tomorrow. And I think we're, we, we're in a society where a lot of it is that short-term gain. We want to connect with people that can do something for us today. But I think you need to connect with people because you connect with them. And I think that's really important. Making authentic connections is a bit like finding Mr. Right. I'm all about relationships, this is good. It can happen anywhere, anytime. It's really about being open and then being brave enough to ask for a phone number or business card or seek them out for lunch or for coffee. I have a tattoo on my left arm that says, be brave. And it's a daily reminder to try something new, to really be brave in everything that we do. And I think that's important. And I think that networking is very much about that. Connecting with someone that you feel that meaningful connection with. I know that words like authenticity get thrown around a lot these days. But for me, it's not a buzzword. Authenticity is something that I work on bringing to every interaction, no matter what my immediate goal is. Sometimes you think you're looking for one thing, but you end up finding something quite different, something more sustainable and something more true. Just like with boy relationships, you know, that guy that you thought you'd never date and you shouldn't date, but he actually ends up being the guy you end up marrying because he's perfect. That's, that's. That's networking. <laughs> well, it's appropriate to get to the next point. Like the first time I met Paul Haggis. Um, I was pitching him on a product, and he was pitching me to be part of his charitable organization. And if any of you have had the privilege to meet Paul, he's always pitching you on something. Um, 
But what was interesting about that interaction is it was actually a meeting of the minds. We became friends, we blended our networks by working on projects that matter to us both, including Artists for Peace and Justice. Artists for Peace and Justice really changed my life in a lot of ways. Uh, we started working on Artists for Peace and Justice before the earthquake hit in Haiti. And it was interesting, many people didn't even know where Haiti was. And it's two hours away from Miami, it's in our backyard. And um, when the earthquake hit, everybody knew where Haiti was. But one of the things that we realized is how do we help Haiti help Haiti? And Paul, myself, and many other uh, people decided, you know, that were part of the or Artists for Peace and Justice organization decided we need to help Haitians help Haitians, and we did it through education. So uh, we built the very first free high school in Port-au-Prince that we actually opened um, two years ago. And since then, since the earthquake, we've been able to raise $10 million. It really has, thank you. It's, it's changed my perspective. It's changed my life in a lot of ways. And that's networking. Had I not met Paul, I wouldn't be educated on the need in Haiti. And we wouldn't be doing, um, I think, such great work. And um, I think we need to be open to all the things that come into our life. Paul has said of working with me that it's like, and by the way, you'll see a lot of quotes from, you'll hear a lot of quotes from people because I thought, I went to a lot of my friends and I said, I'm doing this, this speech on networking and why do they want me to talk? I don't really understand. And so I went out with similar questions to all of them and it's interesting the feedback that I received and it actually helped formulate the entire talk. So Paul has said of working with me, it's like working with a really smart friend who understands the goal and will work really hard to get shit done. And he actually said that, he swears a lot. <laughs> You'll get to see him during the film festival this year as he's got a movie coming out, but he swears a lot. Much of my network feels like we're all part of a family with a common goal, to do really great work. And much of that great work is built on hard work. And that's the second key to building a network, is hard work. People tend to think networking is all about being very outgoing and socially gregarious, but it's really about finding a balance. I think it's essential that you don't let networking take over from simply working. <laughs> you see, a network is also built on a reputation, and a reputation is built on hard work. 90% of the work we get through the door at NKPR is through word of mouth and is based on the work that we do and the results that we deliver. That's how many of my connections are actually made. Even in the early days, before I became me, <laughs> while being at university, I had a part-time job at one of my favorite stores, Mendocino. We love Mendocino, don't we? Yes. <laughs> um, and it's interesting because 20 years later, they're now my client. I asked Jan Kaplan, one of the owners, about why he sought me out 20 years later to do their PR, and he said this, you were one of the best salespeople we had, you worked hard, and the clientele loved you. You know our philosophy and our brand, and you are the perfect partner for Mendocino today. It's interesting, actually, because you never know where your network will lead you. And two decades later, the hard work, the dedication, and the mutual respect and admiration 20 years ago came full circle with Mendocino. You need to remember that the connections that you make in your 20s are connections that you probably will come full circle when you're 40 or 50 or in your 30s. So you need to really be mindful of that because sometimes it's that short term and you forget about the person but you really can't do that. Like your behavior matters and I think we need to really be mindful. That brings me to the third point which is it all comes for full circle. It always does. As a society, we tend to have a very short attention span and always focus on the short-term gain. This kind of myopic approach can not only bite you in the ass, and I swear a lot too, sorry, <laughs> but can cause you to miss out on long-term potential. I really do believe what goes around always, always comes around. It's like karma. One of the first clients for me was CIBC. We became their agency of record, leveraging all of their sponsorship, in sponsorship initiatives across Canada. I like Scotia too, we work with you guys also. <laughs> <laughs> but in the early days, it was interesting, when I first started NKPR, within the first year we became their agency of record. So it brought me from me to 
there are four of us um, in the office, and then we grew quite quickly from there. But we were leveraging their sponsorship programs around the CIBC Run for the Cure, which is amazing, Cirque du Soleil, the Canadian Alpine Ski Team, the Canadian Soccer Association. There we worked with so many amazing people, like Stephen Graham, who uh, was their chief marketing officer at the time, John Jenner, who was their VP of marketing, Sarah Saso, who was their director of sponsorship, and Joanne Bull, who was their di director of marketing. And of course, CIBC's fearless leader at the time, President and CEO, Mr. John Hunkin. Well, fast forward a few years, and their entire sponsorship team was let go, as what happens in business at times. It was unfortunate for them, and it was unfortunate for many reasons, including the fact that they were my biggest client. So my four-person shop could have been a no-person shop very quickly. Uh, but because of the hard work and the good work that we did for them, all of those relationships produced even more of a network for me. In fact, much of my business got started because of these relationships. When CABC broke down, I thought for sure NKPR was done because they were my biggest client. But it actually wasn't the case at, at all. Within six months, we were almost triple the size. And this is why. Stephen Graham, who has recently been named Marketer of the Year, which is quite exciting, moved on to Rogers Media. He introduced us to the publishers of Hello Magazine and Chatelaine. They became our clients. John Jenner moves to AstraZeneca, and we became AstraZeneca's agency of record for several years. And together, we developed an, incre an incredible children's wellness program called At My Best. Joanne Bull moved to TD Bank. Sorry, Scotia. <laughs> But we do do work with Scotia, by the way, on the Contact Photography Festival, sorry. <laughs> and we are now their agency of record, managing the TD Music sponsorships. And John Hunkin sits on the board for St. Michael's Hospital, and we manage all of their um, PR initiatives. And in turn, I asked John to sit on the Artists for Peace and Justice board. It's interesting how it all works, isn't it? It all comes full circle. It always does. So you need to really honor and cherish the relationships that you have, and you need to be the best you you can always be. I say that to my team all the time. You're at the office, and you have your relationships. Be the best that you can be, as opposed to just putting in your time. And I think that's really important, because you, need, you want those relationships, and you want who you are to really last, and to leave that lasting impression. Another person from those early days was Sarah Saso, now the executive director of Green Shield Canada Foundation. She has been there every step of the way. I told her I was asked to speak about networking and wasn't really sure what to say. She told me this, if you didn't know how to network, how could you have possibly grown your one woman business to a team of 30 professionals with offices and clients in Canada and the US in just 10 years? I was happy to be your first client in 2002, and because of your valuable strategic counsel, I'm happy to be your client today. I feel like I was part of the process, and today I feel part of NKPR. What I love most about what she said was that she feels this authentic connection to NKPR. I stayed in touch with Sarah over the years, and I felt like I was part of her life this past decade as well. The relationship came full circle where Sarah hired us 10 years later. I love that Sarah feels part of the NKPR build. It's true, she was, and she is. Now NKPR is me and 30 amazing colleagues with offices in Toronto, New York, managing over 30 national and international clients in the lifestyle, fashion, beauty, entertainment, health and wellness, and not-for-profit sectors. We work on amazing brands like Avon, Kiehl's, Tweezerman, Rachel Roy, and Jones, New York. It's pretty exciting. Like We get to pick and choose who we work with. We get to pit, pick and choose who we work on. And the connections that we've been able to foster over the years, they're authentic connections because they're based on shared values of what we love and what they love. And I think that's really important. When I look at my client list today, and even at my inbox or Twitter followers, I see meaningful relationships that span the entire decade. This isn't because I played a calculated game but because I was engaged authentically and not just looking for a quick return. You see, the truth is that success is never a one-woman show. It really is about a group of people collaborating, creating something bigger out of their individual uniqueness, working together to harness the best possible potential in each other. After all that hard work and care cultivating authentic relationships, many people might feel inclined to be protective of their network. 
but on the contrary, the fourth key to a successful network is being willing to share your network. Hence, you and I talking about making a connection. One of the main ways of giving back to your network is to share it by introducing people to each other. By sharing my, net my network, I've been able to create opportunities for myself and for others. In much the same way, I might create strategic alignments and use brands to help drive other brands forward in my business, looking for opportunities to create the right strategic partnerships. Craig Lawrence runs a celebrity division at One Management in New York City. He reps girls like Bar Raffaelli and Karina Kornikova, and used to run the celebrity division at Ford Models, and that's where we worked together, where we, we were their agency of record for several years in New York. He remarked on my ability to build bridges between clients, telling me this. You have an incredible ability to align the right people with one another and to connect all the dots. You share well, Natasha. Well, reading that made me laugh, as I felt like I was six years old, sitting in a sandbox, sharing all my toys. <laughs> but it's kind of like that, isn't it? It should be like that. I think that, you know, as women, we should be sharing our networks. It's about propelling each other forward. And I think that's really, um, I think that's really important. It was my birthday recently, and it was so interesting to watch everyone network. I received a text from my friend Carrie, who is a VP at MGM, having lunch with my friend Marnie, an executive at Rogers Media, and they thanked me for introducing them. It really warmed my heart. I think that if I can help people progress, then I'm progressing as well, and I think we all need to look at life like that. Some of the meaningful partnerships and collaborations NKPR created was because we shared our relationships, including last year's It Lounge. How many of you are familiar with the It Lounge? <laughs> All the NKPRs. <laughs> um, I channeled my own Miranda Priestley from The Devil Wears Prada. How many of you love The Devil Wears Prada? No, oh, okay. <laughs> and do you know the line, I got Patrick, get me Patrick, get me Patrick? Do you guys remember that line? Well, we got Patrick last year. Uh, we brought Patrick Dermarchelier to, the, to Toronto uh, for the first time in his career, which is interesting, to photograph celebrities during the Toronto International Film Festival. Um, it was a marriage of so many great personal passions for me. Photography, fashion, movies. What made that collaboration with Patrick come full circle was benefiting so many people involved. We were able to, I mean, the city of Toronto benefited because it was the first time ever Patrick was in Toronto. He was so excited to walk the streets of the city. It was crazy. He's like, I love the city. It's like a clean New York. I thought, yeah, it is. Um, but also the magazines that have never had an opportunity to actually um, be in, to interview Patrick, like Ryan Chung from Flair Magazine, he was so excited to meet him. Um, or Norman Wong, who was one of the photographers that we had at the It Lounge as well. Patrick was his idol. He was the reason he became a photographer. So it's all about making those connections and propelling people forward. Our brands really benefited from that because he's a fashion icon. He's the biggest photographer in the world. So the fact that we were able to bring him here and make sure that everybody benefited from that, I thought was really, really valuable. And that's all about sharing. And I think that's, that's important. But this brings me sort of to the next point, because one of the things that we did with uh, Patrick was we really leveraged it with social media. So it wasn't just the few people that we were able to engage one-on-one, -on -one, but it was also about making sure we were able to share the magic of Patrick with an entire community and the public. And the way we were able to do that was through social media. So fifth point is social networking, the do's and don'ts of social networking. Our willingness to share is even more evident nowadays with how people use social media. And because it's become such an integral part of both our personal and professional lives, learning to use social media is key to building a network. I find many people are totally lost when it comes to leveraging social media to build a network. They think, for example, linking in to professionals is, well, that's my network but you don't have an authentic relationship necessarily with all the people that you're linking, linking to. I practiced my speech actually a lot. I didn't just practice in front of my dog. I practiced in front of one of my 20-year-old colleagues. She's like, what's a Rolodex? And I said, okay, I won't use Rolodex. Phone book. <laughs> so to me, LinkedIn is kind of like, <laughs> it's true, I got that question. She's like, what is that? Can you say it again? Um, 
but it's interesting. Like you, to me, LinkedIn is like a phone book with a photo. And so just because you've got this Rolodex and all these people on your LinkedIn doesn't mean you're friends with them. It doesn't mean you're friends with your friends' friends. It just means you've got their phone number and your contact information, but you're not connected to them. And I think it's really important that the more connected we are, the less of a connection we have. And we need to really look at how do we use these tools to propel us forward, but use them in the most meaningful way. So I would look at, so, you know, that's not to say that you can't have meaningful connections without LinkedIn, but you need to actually still be able to connect. This is something we've learned at NKPR as we took over at the managing of social media platforms for many of our clients a few years ago. It's about providing valuable content for those you are connecting with. What you have to say needs to be meaningful, and it needs to be the true you. And I think what happens often with LinkedIn is, or not even just with LinkedIn, even with Twitter. It's like we try too hard, and I think it's really important to let the true us come out, what, whatever your interests are. Because if you actually put your interests out there, you're going to attract people that actually care about your interests. And I think that's all about shared connections. And I think that's what makes for meaningful connections. If you really want to connect with a person, try and find a way to get on their radar in a way that makes you stand out as an individual and as somebody who is interesting and genuine. Old-fashioned as it sounds, nothing beats a personal interaction for making that strong first impression. Where social media is more useful is when it comes to the hard work of maintaining your network. LinkedIn and Twitter are very useful for keeping tabs on your people and knowing on what's going on in their lives, and it's useful for them to keep tabs on you too. But um, I think that's what's really valuable about Twitter is I find I'm so busy these days because I, I travel between Toronto and New York. I find I can't see everybody I want to see and everybody that I really care about, but on Twitter, I can. So I feel like I have these meaningful connections through Twitter where I can keep tabs on people and say hi and tell them I really miss them without actually making or finding the time to see them. It's difficult. I think we're all so busy nowadays. People really notice when you make that effort. Marnie Peters, the Senior Director, Brand Development of Rogers Consumer Publishing, so she works on magazines like Chatelaine, Today's Parent, and Hello, emailed me this recently when I asked her what she thinks is important when it comes to social platform interaction. She said, I've always valued the time you take to nurture your network. You're the first person to send a thoughtful note, special treat, or shout out that truly makes me feel very special to be part of your network. I loved reading this because I do make a real effort online because I find that it's hard to find the time to see people, but at least if you can connect with them uh, through social media, it is valuable. Not every conversation needs to be about driving business. Once you have a rapport, it might just be about girl talk. Whatever your shared passions, it can all be part of maintaining those relationships. In my case, I'm always tweeting about my late latest online purchase. I'm addicted to online shopping, net a porte. I'm sure everyone reads about those. But there is, of course, a cautionary tale when it comes to social media. You're really out there. It's important to know and stick with your purpose, especially beware of the overshare or veering off-brand or off-point. And I think we need to remember, because of social media, each one of you is a brand. And I don't know if you've ever read the column that I did um, in the Huffington Post or even the last time I spoke, I talked about the five I am's to help you really determine what your brand is so that you can be very clear on who you are and what you want the public to see you as. With social, even if you have 20 followers or 100 followers, you're a brand. So you need to really be mindful of what you're putting out there. Finding a balance between expressing your genuine self and being professional takes awareness and quite a bit of sensitivity. And what you say online can follow you and haunt you if you take the wrong step. Because in the end, remember, everything comes full circle. So in conclusion, whether you're searching for a new job or expanding your client list, making friends or mentoring, I think the most important thing to understand is this, that your network, like your friendships and other relationships, is only as strong, committed, and authentic as you are. I thought it would be appropriate to close my talk with yet another quote, <laughs> this time from someone unexpected, Ethan Hawke. <laughs> it is unexpected, isn't it? It's like, that's a little weird, but it's a great quote. 
channel the best part of you, where it's not about your ego and not about getting ahead, then you can have fun and you aren't jealous of others. You see other people's talent as another branch of your own. You can keep it all rooted in joy. I love that quote because it, it is about helping people propel forward because that's going to bring out the best in you. Thank you.